it's it's happened. It's finally here, you guys. The new Gloom Spike Gifts Battle Tome. I am horrifically excited. I couldn't sleep a wink last night because I was just waiting for the release. It is a good day. Now, um, my first thought when the new book came out was how to recreate my old army. Um, so what I want to talk about first is what I used to play. And I made a little picture because I used to play the Web Spinner Shaman on Arachnorok as basically an eight-legged Teclas. Which is interesting because Teclas, the model actually has eight limbs already. It's got the four li uh, the four legs on the Sphinx and the arms and legs on Teclas himself. So eight legs in there, eight legs in the Arachnorok. Coincidence? I don't think so. But uh, that's how I used to use him. Uh, he would regularly get up to a plus four cast rerollable on Scuttletide. It was amazing. And bad news, it's not possible anymore. So uh, let's talk about how we can make um, the same kind of list or a similar kind of list in the new battle zone. So uh, what lists did well last season? Obviously, lots of Gits lists did terribly. What lists had good results? I'll start with my list that I used to use. Uh, so this is list one. Uh, this is in no particular order. I'm going first with my list. And it was a Magic Dom Castle. That's what I called it. It was all about using the buffs from the Catchweb Spider Shrine, which gives plus one to cast, plus one to unbind, and is unchanged in the new book, and using that to cast lots of endless spells. List two that's had lots of success was more based on trolls, and it was also castly, um, and it would use Unleash Hell and a trolly counterpunch in order to win. Now, there is a list three, honorable mention to Iron Gutsman. Um, he managed to make this work with an incredibly difficult list, using hoppers as anvils, which was insane. I don't know how he managed it, but props to him. Uh, that's not influencing this list, uh, but I figured I should give that an honorable mention. So, list one. What would go into list one before? This is old book. So we put a web spinner shaman on a Ragnarok in there. That's your general. Uh, you give an arcing tome master of magic. So it's three casts and re-rolling once per turn. You put in two baby wizards uh, and you choose two from here. Normally you'd at least have one web spinner because the web spinner gets the buff from the big spider. And then either the madcap or the fungoid. Normally the fungoid if you can afford it. You'd have MSU Spider Battle Line. Um, they're the cheapest battle line in the book, and still are. So definitely worth considering. Um, and then you'd have three endless spells. Why do you want three endless spells? It's because there's actually a core rule which says you can only attempt to dispel one endless spell a turn max. And so what I was doing, apart from the mushroom, is I was trying to throw in as many hard-to-dispel and the spells as possible. Scuttletide has a casting value of seven. Also really interesting to use Purple Sun in this list, which has a very high casting value. And then the Mushroom just does loads of damage. You almost want it to be dispelled as well, so you can um, reposition it. And then you'd finish the list with some punchy hammers. Uh, Rock Guts Maya Brute Kragnos is what I used in my last GT, um, which is quite a lot of points, quite a lot of points of hammers. Um, but you could do any combination of them. There's other options. You could do the Slogoth. You could do 12 Rock Guts. You could do Manglers. You could do Squig Herd. You could do Boring Grots. Loads of options. Um, now, what did this list lose? Well, it lost some parts of the Bad Moon. One of the things that it relied on was getting plus one to cast reliably around the Loon Shrine. And I'd castle around the Loon Shrine and get ridiculous bonuses to cast. I would always ask my opponent if I can use the mysterious terrain rules, which are technically core rules that we should be using, and also part of the reason why you'd sometimes want to be attacker, because then you get to choose the side with the good ar the good terrain rules, um, and then you'd you'd aggressively try to gain arcane ne uh, while within um, aura of the loon shrine, and then you'd get up to plus three to cast for most things, but plus four for scuttle tide. Now, the plus one to cast is gone. And the other thing that's gone 
is the minus one to cast when enemy wizards are under the light. So where before we were getting some serious magic dump because we were getting a bonus and they were losing out, that's just gone. So that's making it a lot more difficult to control what they're doing, at least in that regard. The other part we lost is the CP. We were gaining one CP extra a turn. Well, a round, not a turn. Uh, as long as our general was under the light of the bad moon, which it wants to be anyway. So lots of stuff that we lost out on there. Um, I was a bit sad about that. And also Mork's Mighty Mushroom. I think that they only moved it down to 40 because that made it auto-include. And um, that was just an idea that they had in order to like help Git's lists out. Similar to how they made Sigvold so cheap. Um, Sigvold was already all to include, and so they made him cheaper, and that was to help out Slanesh lists. They did the same thing with Morak's Mighty Mushroom, but now that Gitz has their battle dome, back up it goes. So uh, I'm predicting Sigvold to get a points increase when Slanesh book comes out. Just going to put that out there now. But yeah, it's back up to 100 points. Um, it's not to include anymore in my opinion as much as i love the spell i had great success with this spell now what did it gain well we gained a lot of things scragrot one of them scragrot's new war scroll spell is fantastic we gained bad snatchers bad snatchers is a sub faction go into it in a second and the scuttle tide got buffed right so um start with scragrot scragrot's got this war scroll spell called fangs of the bad moon pick an enemy within 24 and uh, it has to be visible and for each three up, and you're rolling a number of dice equal to the casting roll, and you've got plus one to the casting roll, native on, on Scragrot, for each three up, they will suffer one mortal wound. Average, how many mortal wounds is that? Well, average on 2d6 is seven, plus one, because it's the it's not the um, unmodified roll, it's the it's just, just the roll. So it could be an eight, average eight now. And well, it's every three up, so that's what, one, two, three... 3.7 mortal wounds on average that's awesome and you have the potential to spike and this can target galician champions this is a fantastic spell it's exactly what this list wants to be playing scragra is also really cheap now 160 points what's bad snatchers bad snatchers is a sub faction which helps wizards what does it do uh, each time a casting roll is made for a friendly bad snatchers moon clan wizard if they're wholly within nine of any other friendly Bad Snatchers wizards, you can re-roll one of the dice. Now, that's not um, the best of the uh, of magic sub-factions that I've ever seen, but it's a bonus, and we love those bonuses when we're already getting good rolls. So it really helps. I think it's perfect. You definitely want to take it. Important to note, Scragrot doesn't benefit from this. He's keyword locked to King's Gits, which is a different sub-faction. So even though we're playing Scragrot, he can't use this rule. But every other wizard we play can. Next, Scuttletide got buffed, which is insane. Uh, now, Scuttletide is more expensive now. It went up 15 points from 70 up to 85. Doesn't matter. It, this is just... Uh, it's the absolute crutch of the army. It's, it's, it's such a good spell. Um, when I was playing into Gargants recently, this was taken out... Each game, it took out a Gargant. That's how many mortal wounds it was doing before. So before, um, you'd summon it, it would make a move, and you'd roll six dice, and every five up is a mortal wound. And then when the opponent moves within six of it, they take the same damage again. And if they charge within six of it, they take the same damage again. So if it's their turn, you can be rolling 18 dice. Well, they've changed it to eight dice. Now on their turn, they could be rolling up to 24 dice every five ups a mortal wound. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's, that's eight mortal wounds average. That's insane. Scuttle Tide is auto-include. I think in every list right now. It's insanely good. Um, it also got buffed in another way. If the Endless Spell is wholly within 12 of any Arachnorox, that it can only be dispelled on a 9 plus. Normally it's an 8 plus. Um, so that's that's okay. Uh, that might happen sometimes. Um, but we're not relying on that. Oh, and also it's faster. It used to only move 6 inches. Now it moves 8. It used to come out 6 from a terrain and then move 6. Now it comes out 8 inches from a terrain feature and can move 8. 
every hero face. It, we, it, it's one problem before was being too slow. It now moves eight inches. It's amazing. Scuttle Tide's incredible now. Definitely want to play it. Okay, list two. So what was list two? List two was um, actually played in the old Grim Scuttle, which was bad. No Spider Fang would, would, uh, player would ever take it. But he was a Trox player. There was a little catch where Trog players wouldn't have to take the command trait and artifact, um, and yet they'd get all the bonuses, small as they might be, um, from the list, uh, fr from the sub-faction. Um, so they'd take Grimscuttle just to help the couple spider units in the list. So General would be the Trog boss in that list to make uh, uh, the Trog's battle line. He'd play two times six Rock Guts as your big hammers, two times three Fell Waters. Now these were Unleash Hell bots. Uh, they're really good at casting, not casting, but using Unleash Hell. Um, that's what their job was. And they'd have two screens. Spider Riders and Rippers would be standard, because Rippers are the cheapest. If you could have taken two units of Rippers, you would. But instead, you'd take Spider Riders for 90. Um, and that's what you'd take. You'd also take a Madcap holding a Moonfaced Moment. A Madcap with a Moonfaced Moment is basically a Purple Sun. Uh, as long as he's within 12 at the start of the combat phase... He chooses a unit, and they get minus one to save. It's amazing. That's an artifact. Uh, you'd also play the Marsh Crawler Slogoth, which gives a plus one to hit aura. I think everyone knows that tech piece by now. Uh, and I, and th I think this list also ran the Mire Brute Trogoth as well, which is uh, another troll from Cruel Boys. Uh, and then a Skittish Strand of Ragnarok uh, that was used for deep striking and for taking um, either taking an objective or scoring Desecrate, scoring Barge through enemy lines, that sort of thing. Now, what did that list lose? Rippers. Oh, poor Rippers. So Rippers used to be 70 points for the three models, and they were like 12-inch move, uh, which was awesome. Uh, I used to love using them with a Kragnos, uh, and I think I still might try that, but what you do is you'd charge in with Kragnos and Rippers into a target, you'd kill the target with Kragnos, and then because Rippers charged in that turn, you still get to pile in. And so you'd have this moving screen... Um, where you'd be able to screen after combat, during the combat phase, so that next turn, Kragnos is semi-protected. It was awesome. And the reason you'd want Rippers to do that is they have a six-inch pile-in. I might now try to start doing that with the the new Wolf Riders, because they also have that six-inch pile-in move. Uh, but now Rippers, they've gone to three wounds apiece and 110 points. I think it's overpriced. I do think it's overpriced. I think I'd rather take... Snarl Fang Riders over Rippers. If I was to go for the same strategy, I'd pay the extra 25 points. Uh, so yeah, Rippers is not as good anymore. And Skit Strand's been changed. Now, it's been changed in some way for the worse, some way for the better. It used to be 160 points, so it was just cheap for grab and desecrate. It's now 200. Now, what it can do is it has this way of going back into reserve. Um, so you pop it out in the movement phase. And then at the end of combat phase, you can pop it back out. Problem is, if you do that, it doesn't finish capturing on a, a terrain piece or capturing an objective. Um, so Skitter Strand, it remains to be seen if it's, if it's going to be good. Uh, I think we'll go more into Skitter Strand tech in another video. All right, but what did it gain? It gained a lot, this list. First of all, Trogoth Regen is so much better. Now, instead of it being on in your hero phase, on a four up, you heal D3. Now it's both hero phases, you can heal D3, which is amazing. And it's been new to the start. It used to be in the hero phase main, uh, which is worse. It's worse because of um, because of heroic recovery, which ha has to happen at the start. Um, now the truck bus command ability is also really good. It was awesome before. Uh, but now when you use all that attack with the, um, with the man himself, with the truck bus, you also get plus one attacks if you're using it on a Trogoth. That's awesome. Trogs only get two attacks each. Now it's up to three attacks with the, with this. That's awesome. Um, and they're also getting the plus one to hit. Uh, then we've got Fellwaters. Fellwaters are sick. Fellwaters got really super buffed. They used to only give minus one to hit vers uh, versus attacks against them. Now, as long as they're within three of the unit... That minus one to hit applies to everything that they do, even if they're attacking a different unit. So that's awesome. And their vomit, that's that's the really great thing. 
Um, so it's it's going to be another purple sun effect. It's going to be minus one to save, which is sick. So we can do it from moon face moment and from the fell waters. And we've already got two rend. All right, just imagine hitting some chosen, and he's like, ha you can't get my chosen. I've used mystic shield in them and all that defense. So they're, they're on a one-up save, right? Oh no, what do you do? Trogs hit them <clears throat> after fell waters damage them. Hopefully, that's the one hard bit, is getting Fell Watchers to damage them. Uh, but then Trogs hit them, um, and the Moonface Bombard hits them. So Ren 2, minus 1 from the Madcap, minus 1 from the Fell Watchers. They're down to a 5-up save. This is chosen with Mystic Shield all that defense. <laughs> it's insane. It's really good. Um, and their, their attacks are pretty decent. Uh, they've got a fair chance of getting one wounded. You have to have caused a wound in order for them to get the... Um, the debuff, but I think that's fairly doable. And the other b thing that we gained was Galician Champion Enhancements, Tunnel Master. Really good for the Moonface moment. Uh, before, you'd have to rely on either walking the Madcap down the road with his four wounds or getting off Hand of Gork. Now you can just automatically do it with the once per battle uh, teleport, which comes from Tunnel Master. It's, it's a with one of the unique enhancements in this GHB. So that's also really good for playing this list. Now, what if I tried to just put list one straight into the, the 3.0 book? How would it look, points-wise? I would, the 270 for the Web Spinner Shaman on Arachnarok, that's the same, that's fine. 165, if I've got the Mad Cap and the Web Spinner, now cheaper, 135. MSU Spider Battle Line, Still 270. Okay, so far so good. Uh, three endless spells. It was 185. Now, 245. Because I was playing Mushroom. I've calculated this as if the third spell was Quicksilver Swords, which combos very well with Scuttletide, especially now that they're both at 8 inches. And they would just chase around a unit. Oh, and now when they do that, they, you're going to be rolling in the hero phase 20 dice against them and each five ups a mortal wound, and 12 of them can't be saved by ward saves. Oh, you could just kill anything, just chase them around. It's amazing. Um, and then for your punchy things, uh, the number there, 470, that's for six rock guts, one my brute, from 470 to 500. So the rock guts got expensive, more expensive by 30. So our new total, we're up 60 points. All right, so we're actually getting a little bit more expensive, especially with the costs within the spells. All right, so what are we going to do? How are we still going to produce a list where we can be Magic Dom, but we want to still be competitive in price? Because it's more expensive now. There's a new command trait. We, what we're going to do is we're going to combine these two lists into one. <laughs> so this command trait is um, it's only available, <clears throat> excuse me, it's only available to Trog bosses. It's called Loon Skin. And what it does is you pick a Mork's Mighty Mushroom, Scuttletide, or Malevolent Moon, and you add it to your army without spending any points. And the Trog boss is able to summon it as if they were a wizard. This is sick. This is so great. It, it, it's such an expensive and powerful in the spell. You're getting it for free. It's oh, it, unbelievable. So really, really good command trait. This is going to be hard to beat for anyone taking uh, a Trogoth army. Loon skin is awesome. Uh, going Malevolent Moon with it, also very legitimate. I'll talk more about Malevolent Moon later. So let's start our list. Our general is going to be the Dankhold Trog boss. He's our general. We're going to give him Loon skin. Uh, he costs 200 points. He's less than before, and he's better than before, because now his all that attacks gives extra attacks to trolls. Uh, what else are we going to have? Well... We want to have our great wizards. We're going to have our Techless Spider, Web Spinner Shaman on Arachnarok. We're going to give him the spell Sneaky Distraction, which also got buffed with this new book. It used to be minus one to hit um, for enemy units if they're wholly within 12. Now it's minus one to hit for them if they're within 12, which is so much easier to do. It's a much bigger bubble now that you're giving this debuff. It's great. Sneaky Distraction. Then we're going to take Scragrot. Uh, now, Scragrot, we don't have to give him a spell because he gets Lore Master. He knows all of the Moon Clan lore. He knows Hand of Gork, which is the teleport. He knows Itchy Nuisance, which is the fight, uh, fight last spell. 
and there's another couple spells that he, he, he's got. So, Scrag Rot, we got him. That comes to 630 points. Okay, good start. We need Battle Line. What are we going to take for Battle Line? Let's go Trolls. All right, so we're going the same way as uh, List 2. Because our general is a, a Trog boss, we can't take Spider Riders as Battle Line as much as I'd love to. So let's go six Trolls, six more Trolls, three Fell Waters. All right, just three. We're not going to take uh, the two times three like in the previous list. We're going to try and save some points there. Uh, so that's going to take our battle line cost to 800. Okay, we've, got, we've used a lot of our, our points already. So what are we missing? Let's have a look. Screens. We didn't get our screens yet. So for our screens, we're going to take one unit of spider riders. We don't need a second unit because we only have one unit of fell waters. So we just need to screen them off and help them out with their unleash hell. Then we're going to take a slogoth. Now, I'm not sure about the Slogoth. This is one thing I'm considering changing in the list. You could change this to a Maya Brute Trogoth. There's room in the list. Um, the reason why I'm not sure you need it is now the Trog boss, with his buff, gives the plus one to hit, whereas previously he didn't, and he wouldn't be able to get plus one to hit and the Trog boss's buff. Now you can. So I'm not convinced on the Slogoth yet, but as we've got two units of Trogoths, if they're both fighting, we can only give all that attack to one of them. So it might still be worth more testing required. Um, so we'll have him for now. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely something you can consider swapping out. Maybe swap it to Sneaky Snufflers. They're awesome. Maybe swap it to uh, a Myabrit Trogoth. Yep, could definitely consider that. Um, but for now, let's just keep it like this. Oh, another option. Oh, here's here's some secret tech. You can swap it for an Auric, War, uh, Auric Mega Boss on foot. The reason why you do that is he's a Galician champion with a 3-up save and 7 wounds. That's hard to kill, and therefore he's a decent Galician champion for you to run around the battlefield scoring points. Uh, that's the only reason that you take that one. It's not because he does damage. He does do damage, but it's because he is survivable. We're also going to try out Spore Splatter Fanatics. What do these guys do? Well, if a unit... It, a friendly unit is wholly within nine of them, they're going to get plus one attacks. We can get our trolls to four attacks each, which means the full unit of trolls is attacking. They're going to be 24 attacks, hitting on twos, wounding on twos if we get our triumph off, two rend, plus two, another additional uh, one rend from our fell waters, and three damage. Insane. Absolutely insane. Sports Battle Fanatics have a secondary use in that they're useful against shooting. So if they're threatening one of your flanks with shooting, you can use the Fanatics to block that off. They cause things to become invisible if a line between the models passes through them. So that's Fanatics. Okay. So our other list comes to 330. And the spells. Okay, here's where we're getting expensive. Scuttle Tide is 85 points. We'll go Quicksilver Swords. To combine with that, that's going to be a really good spell this season because we want to be hunting things like Galatian Champions, which uh, shooting otherwise isn't able to do. So Scuttle Tide Quicksilver Swords, they're great at hunting down enemy bosses, um, enemy uh, Galatian Champions, whatever. Like, you know, they're great at killing Storm Fiends, they're great at killing Chosen. Oh my god, Chosen, when they get hit by these things. It's it's sad for them. Um, and we'll also take Malevolent Moon. Now, what does Malevolent Moon do? It used to be bad. It used to have to go through them, and then it would do a, a mini stomp. A, a two-up would deal D3 mortal wounds. Now they're going to do an AoE stomp. Uh, they don't have to go through. Uh, it doesn't have to pass through the unit. Uh, you just have to... I think you have to end within three of them, or end within one of them. It, it's, it's something like that. But that's not the reason why you take Malevolent Moon. It's because Malevolent Moon gives you the light of the bad moon. And that's going to help us with keeping our Trogoths under the light of the Bad Moon, which gives them plus one to save. And our, our Trogoths have just had their save buffed to a four up. So under the light of the Bad Moon, they're a three up. They're actually very tanky now. Like, actually tanky. With a three up before all out defense. Um, and then a five up ward. Really good stuff. So that's why we're taking the level at Moon. But now we're getting to the point where we're too expensive. So what do we do? Oh, wait, Loonskin. 
Yes. So we're going to take away 85 points from our list. And then we're going to put it back into our heroes. We're going to grab our Madcap Shaman. He's now 70 points. We're going to give him the Moonface Moment. That's where our artifact will go. We'll give him the spell Itchy Nuisance. So that after we teleport him, because he's going to take Tunnel Master. So after we teleport him... Um, oh, actually, it doesn't work. You'd have to Hand of Gork him to be able to Itchy Nuisance afterwards. But that, that that's fine. Um, because you teleport him in the movement phase with Tunnel Master. Uh, guaranteed. That's if Hand of Gork doesn't go off. Uh, and then in the combat phase, you get to use Moon Face Moment. That means our Rock Gut Trogoths are potentially going to 24 attacks, hitting on twos, wounding on twos, rend effectively four, damage three. That's scary. That's really scary. And these are tanky boys. Um, and uh, well, at the same time, with them having to worry about those two big units of Trogoths that are constantly healing, able to rally, all these other things... At this exact same time, they've got Quicksilver Swords and Scuttletide, or maybe even the Moon in some matchups, just wrecking havoc in their back line. They don't have anywhere to go. They either choose to stay, stick behind and get killed by the end of the spells, or they run into your trolls. That's what this list does. They are stuck between a Scuttletide and a hard place, and that hard place is strapped to a log that a troll is holding. That's what this list does. This list comes to 1970 out of 2000. One consideration to make is making the list cheaper. We really want the triumph. Otherwise, our Trogoths will not be wounding on twos, they'll be wounding on threes. We want that inspired so that when it's important, we can get to wounding on twos. That would be really good for us. So if we were to do that, I think we would drop the Slogoth. Um, we'd maybe go to Sneaky Snufflers. Sneaky Snufflers could maybe even get us an additional attack. Uh, but only on a 5-up. But still, um, that that could be one way that we play it. Or we could go to uh, the Mega Boss and then we're at 1960. That's a good shot. Anyway, that's the list. Thank you so much for listening to my, my first list idea. I'm going to be doing more of these, so stay tuned to the channel. Uh, I want to talk about an Alpha Strike list. I want to talk about an Ambush list. Uh, I want to do... Spider Fang pure lists. I want to do Squig pure lists. I maybe even look at goblins, though I don't really want to. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for listening to the Point of Years podcast, and goodbye.